to you. Collected Sayings of Kodo Sawaki Chapter 12 To you who is wondering if your Zazen has been good for something. What's Zazen good for? Absolutely nothing. This good for nothing has got to sink into your flesh and bones until you're truly practicing what's good for nothing. Until then, your zazen is really good for nothing. Throwing yourself completely into doing what's good for absolutely nothing, why not give it a try? So you say you'd like to try doing Zazen in order to become a better person. Become a better person by doing Zazen? How ridiculous! How could a person ever become something better? You say you want to become a better person by doing Zazen. Zazen isn't about learning how to be a person. Zazen is to stop being a person. Some say Zen means having an empty mind, right? You won't have an empty mind until you're dead. They think that with Zazen everything gets better. Foolish. Zazen means forgetting better and worse. You are not going to earn tips doing Zazen. The day is as long as a child's day. The mountain is as quiet as the eternal past. Zazen is unsatisfying. Unsatisfying for whom? For the ordinary person. People are never satisfied. In our Soto school, Zazen isn't so exciting. Ordinary people are always looking for excitement. Sports, gambling, on horse races, and things like that. What makes them so popular? It's the excitement of winning and losing. Isn't it self-evident? How could that which is eternal and infinite ever satisfy human desires? Unsatisfying. Simply practicing Zazen. Unsatisfying. Realizing Zazen with this body unsatisfying, absorbing Zazen into your flesh and blood. Being watched by Zazen, cursed by Zazen, blocked by Zazen, dragged around by Zazen, every day crying tears of blood. Isn't that the happiest form of life you can imagine? Somebody asks, I can understand that during Zazen we're Buddhas, but does that mean that we are just ordinary people when we are not doing Zazen? When a thief steals, he's a thief. If for a moment he isn't stealing anything, does that mean that he isn't a thief anymore? Is eating in order to steal and eating in order to practice the Zazen the same thing or are they different? Somebody who steals once isn't trusted anymore. Somebody who practices Zazen once practices eternal Zazen. Zazen is really an amazing thing. When you are sitting, 
it doesn't seem like Zazen is anything particularly good. But when you see it from the outside, there's nothing that could be so majestic. With everything else, it's usually the other way around. Looked at objectively, there's not much to it. You're the only one who thinks what you are doing is so terribly important. The reason the Buddha Dharma fills the whole universe is because it doesn't offer anything you can grab onto. Making a constant effort isn't difficult if you don't grab onto anything. Zazen is transparent. It has no flavor. When we give Zazen a flavor, it becomes something for ordinary people. Zazen isn't so fashionable. What's fashionable is what comes natural for an ordinary person, like the fight over winning and losing in sports. Zazen isn't fashionable because it's flavorless and ungraspable. It doesn't interest childish people. The immense, transparent sky is the same thing as a bonsai tree or little statues for your little altar. It's infinitely vast. Nonetheless, people prefer trimming around on their bonsai trees or tending to their little statues. You want flavoring for your consciousness. That's why you're not impressed by the transparent, tasteless Buddha Dharma. You say, when I do Zazen, I get disturbing thoughts. Foolish. The fact is that it's only in Zazen that you're aware of your disturbing thoughts at all. When you dance around with your disturbing thoughts, you don't notice them at all. When a mosquito bites you during Zazen, you notice it right away. But when you're dancing and the flea bites your balls, you don't notice it at all. A layman asked, I've been practicing Zazen for a long time but I still have many disturbing thoughts and I don't know what to do about it. Only once, during an air raid, when bombs were going off, I did Zazen and didn't have a single disturbing thought. I'd never had such a good Zazen. Still, afterwards, everything was like it was before. Isn't there any way to practice a Zazen like that again? Sawaki Roshi answered, Yes, Koan Zen. Someone gives you a Koan and deals you into a corner. Then there's no room for disturbing thoughts. But still afterwards, everything will be like it was before. You've just pushed your disturbing thoughts aside for a moment. On the other hand, in Dogen Zenji's Shikantaza, it's about completely manifesting your true form. Your ugliness is exposed and you see yourself for who you really are. You realize that you're constantly producing disturbing thoughts, just like a crab blows bubbles. In fact, it's a merit of Zazen 
to be able to see that you're full of disturbing thoughts. When you're completely preoccupied with something, nothing else comes to mind. With a drink in your hand and your arm around a geisha, you don't feel the flea biting you at all. For that instant, all your thoughts are pushed aside. During Zazen though, you're so aware of this flea that you don't know what to do with yourself. Because in Zazen, you aren't numb. You've become transparent and clear. Isn't it natural that in the course of our lives we'll experience all kinds of psychological phenomena? We have all kinds of thoughts during Zazen and we wonder if that's correct. The fact that we can ask ourselves this proves that the nature of Zazen is pure and that this pure nature is looking us in the eye. When we dance around drunk in our underwear, we don't question ourselves at all. Zazen is the unity of Buddha and this ordinary person. At precisely this moment, you can see yourself with the eyes of Buddha and it's clear how imperfect you really are in light of the fact that you are originally a Buddha. It's only the ordinary person in you who is disturbed by disturbing thoughts. Don't whine. Don't stare into space. Just sit. Chapter 13 to you who says that you have attained a better state of mind through Zazen. As long as you say Zazen is a good thing, something isn't quite right. And staying Zazen is absolutely nothing special. It isn't even necessary to be grateful for it. Wouldn't it be strange if a baby said to its mother, please have understanding for the fact that I'm always shitting in my diapers. Without knowledge, without consciousness, everything is as it should be. Don't stain your zazen by saying that you've progressed, feel better, or have become more confident through Zazen. We only say things are going well when they're going our way. We should simply leave the water of our original nature as it is, but instead we are constantly mucking about with our hands to find out how cold or warm it is. That's why it gets cloudy. There are bodhisattvas without magical abilities. These are bodhisattvas who have even entirely forgotten words like practice or satori. Bodhisattvas without wonderful powers. Bodhisattvas who are immeasurable Bodhisattvas who are not interested in their name and fame. Zazen isn't like a thermometer where the temperature slowly rises. Just a little more. Yeah, that's it. Now I've got Satori. Zazen never becomes anything special, no matter how long you practice. If it becomes something special, you must have a screw loose somewhere. 
There are some who can even delude themselves with their zazen. They reckon that the temperature on their zen thermometer is already quite high. But this has nothing to do with zazen. Simply doing it is zazen. The same is also true for ninbutsu. You shouldn't practice ninbutsu in order to go to paradise someday. You should simply do it. This means simply doing what Buddha does. We can't save up on Zazen. I was so very honest when I was still young that I've decided now that I'm old that I can steal things from others from time to time. We can't save up on honesty either. If we don't watch out, we'll start believing that the Buddha Dharma is like climbing up a staircase. But it isn't like this at all. This very step right now is the one practice which includes all practices and it is all practices contained in this one practice. You say you're finished with practice. From a religious point of view, there is nothing more absurd. The true Satori of the Buddha Dharma has got to fill all time, all space, heaven and earth. One or two little Satoris that we pick like apples or pears aren't worth a fart. If you do something good, you can't forget you've done something good. If you've had Satori, you get stuck in the awareness of having Satori. That's why it's better to keep your hands off good deeds and Satori. You've got to be perfectly open and free. Don't rest on your laurels. Even if I say all of this about the Buddha way, ordinary people will still use the Buddha Dharma to try and enhance their value as humans. When there's an opposition between purity and impurity, that leads to a fight between purity and impurity. You've got to go beyond purity and impurity. Zazen is good because Zazen is the posture of the person who has experienced great death. Chapter 14 To you who do everything you can to get Satori, we don't practice in order to get Satori. It's Satori that pulls our practice. We practice being dragged all over by Satori. You don't seek the way. The way seeks you. You study. You do sports. And you're fixated on Satori and illusion. Even Zazen becomes a marathon for you, with Satori as the finish line. Yet, because you're trying to grab it, you're missing it completely. Only when you stop meddling like this does your original, universal nature realize itself. You say you're seeking the way but what does it mean if you're seeking the way just to satisfy yourself? Running after Satori and running away from illusion is buying and selling shares of one and the same company. 
doing zazen because you want to become buddha or get satori is running after an object zazen is to stop wanting to become buddha or experience satori being beyond thinking has nothing to do with seeking satisfaction it means being firmly settled in the here and now the buddha dharma cannot be attained by human effort outside of a special click saying we must attain satori is just as strange as saying we must behold god the buddha dharma doesn't mean personal satisfaction that's why shakyamuni said myself and everything living on the earth attain the way together mountains rivers grasses and trees are all buddha the buddha dharma isn't about trying to get some personal satori people want even their satori made to order the buddha dharma means egolessness everyone has their own personal ego but it's completely backwards to try especially in zazen to get a personal satori egolessness isn't something personal so you want your own personal satori some sort of peace of mind only for yourself do you really think the buddha dharma exists just for you if you aren't careful you might start thinking that your individuality is the most important thing in the world then you forget that which fills the whole universe when i say satori you think that i'm talking about some personal satori so let's get it straight real satori is what you can't even call satori you want to become a buddha there's no need to become a buddha now is simply now you are simply you and tell me since you want to leave the place where you are where is it exactly you want to go wanting to become a buddha by practicing zazen is like sitting in a train and being in such a hurry to get home that you get up and start running inside the train getting satori through practice that's how the world likes to imagine it but no matter what sutra you read you'll never find anything of the sort no buddha has ever become a buddha through practice buddhas have been buddhas from the beginning we don't start practicing now in order to get satori later every single one of us has always been a buddha lacking nothing it's just that somewhere along the line we've forgotten that we've lost our way and now we get all worked up over nothing our practice means nothing besides practicing being the buddha who we have really always been the just sitting shikantaza practiced by the buddhas and ancestors does not mean striving to become a buddha 
if you believe that Buddha or Satori exists outside of Zazen and you think that you can strive towards this, you're mistaking yourself for something special. Buddhist practice means putting Buddha into practice. When you sit Zazen, you attain the way without thinking at all about attaining the way. We don't achieve Satori through practice. Practice is Satori. Each and every step is the goal. We've got to go all the way with our practice. Who cares if some Satori is waiting for us as a reward or not? Most people have lost their soul. They don't move a muscle unless they're paid or praised. And if you don't hold any Satori in front of their noses, they won't practice either. Master Saigen Gyochi asked the sixth ancestor, What practice goes beyond ranks and stages? The sixth ancestor responds, What have you been doing the whole time? Saigen answers, I'm not even practicing the noble truths. That means I haven't even had Satori. The sixth ancestor expressed his deep approval. When you don't even practice the noble truths, what tracks and stages could there still be? The world is full of ranks and stages, rich and poor, important and unimportant. What goes beyond all this is the Buddha Dharma. In Zazen, there is no better and worse, no ranks and stages. Only when you practice Zazen to get Satori are there ranks and stages. A person gets Satori, that's something people can talk about. What people don't talk about is Zazen. Dropping off body and mind means that individual practice and individual Satori disappear. It seems there are some who try to put the Buddha Dharma to work for people. It's just like how everyone these days is interested in self-improvement. They are trying to improve themselves with their practice and get Satori. Yet, it's clear that until we give up this human ambition, there can't be any dropping off of body and mind. The Buddha Dharma is ungraspable, so don't grasp for it. Let go. What are you grasping for anyway? You think you've got something in your hand, but look, you're holding on to horse shit. Because you try to make things your own, you're lost in the labyrinth of transmigration. To say that illusion or satori exists, that's the way the world gossips. That's something they can grasp. The Buddha Dharma cannot be grasped. It's beyond all that. Distinguishing between illusion and satori is human work. The Buddha Dharma doesn't mean destroying illusions to get satori. Zazen means not running after and not running away. The Buddha Dharma is limitless. If you don't understand this limitlessness, 
you won't understand the Buddha Dharma. What's more, if you think in terms of understanding or not understanding, you completely miss the point of limitlessness. That's why there is no illusion outside of Satori and no Satori outside of illusion. Chapter 15 To you who is showing off your Satori why don't you simply have I have Satori tattooed all over your body if you're not conscious of your stomach that's proof your stomach is healthy if you can't forget your Satori that's proof that you haven't got any when an ordinary person has got Satori he's called a Zen devil. That's because he thinks he's something special. When you know you're doing something bad, then it isn't so serious. But people who chat about their Satori don't even realize they're doing something bad. That's why they're such helpless cases. Some people are detested by their entire family and still believe that only they are in the right. If you think you're the only one who's right, you're wrong. That goes even more for certain Zen laymen who think their Satori makes them so important, even if they're hated at home. No illusion is as hard to cure as Satori. The monk Gonyu asks Trushu, How is it when not a single thing appears anymore? Joshua answers, Let it go. Gonyu asks, For me, not a single thing appears anymore. What should I let go? Joshua answers, if that's how it is, then get out of here and take it with you. Don't take pride in your practice. It's clear that any Satori you take pride in is a lie. When superficial people do something wrong, they don't notice it. it. They don't notice it until they've been caught by the police. Not to notice that you're living in an illusion goes with being an ordinary person. You need to see clearly. Real Satori means manifesting your sobriety. It means coming to your senses. The more you look, the more clearly you see your faults as well. Sudden great Satori means that all the old conceptions drop off, including the concepts of Satori and illusion. Just how separate are illusion and Satori anyway? In reality, what we create illusions about and what we awaken to is one and the same thing. Satori means that the Buddha Dharma becomes reality. The Buddha Dharma is an interesting teaching because it says that all Buddhas and all suffering beings are of the same nature. That's why it isn't Buddha Dharma to imagine the Buddhas as something over there on the other side. Until we reach the place where there is no gap between us and Buddha, the place where nothing special exists at all, we will suffer from hesitancy, fatigue, and stagnation. 
Where are you truly at home? You have no traveling companions. Wherever you look, there's no one else. You've got to find the place you and you alone can reach. The great matter of lifelong practice comes to an end means that the way of Buddha becomes reality, that it penetrates your flesh and bones. Satori doesn't mean the end of illusion. The Buddha Dharma is ungraspable. To say that we have Satori is going too far. To say that we don't have Satori isn't going far enough. Great Satori means reality. You've got it backwards if you talk about stages of practice. Practice is Satori. Only Zazen. To ordinary people, this only doesn't seem like it's enough. They want to get something in return for their practice. The word only is important. Just do it. For what? For nothing. There isn't any tip. Only doing. Satori is like a thief breaking into an empty house. He breaks in, but there's nothing to steal, no reason to flee, no one who chases him. So there's nothing which could satisfy him either. You really shouldn't show off with such a worn out word as Satori. You talk about Satori, but what you call Satori is terribly small. The problem lies in your consciousness. Widen your consciousness a little and you'll realize that it's nothing. You can find Satori everywhere in the world, like the air we breathe every day. We don't get Satori in the future. Sometimes people beg me to certify their understanding of the Dharma. As long as you have to ask others for their approval, you're not authentic. Still, there are some who believe they've got Satori because someone else gave them a certificate for it. If you're already there, why ask others for directions? You've heard that wine makes people drunk. And now you're pretending you're drunk and believe that you've really drunk wine. That's just like some forms of Satori. Satori is becoming a technique. The Buddha Dharma and mind of faith aren't techniques. Satori isn't a chore. It means becoming natural. Chapter 16 To you who are impressed by scientific and cultural progress. Everyone is talking these days about progress. But I wonder where this progress is heading. No animal is as dishonest as a human being. Humans eat their party snacks and dance in a circle. They do scientific research and drop hydrogen bombs on each other. When you observe insects in a tank, you see how they bite into each other and hold on with all their might. It must be amusing to observe from another corner of the universe how humans stock up on atomic and hydrogen bombs. Acting clever while at the same time being the biggest idiots. That's human fate. People love it when things are complicated. 
Though things are complicated enough, even when we try to keep them as simple as possible, there are still some who make an effort to be especially complicated in everything they do. The modern world musters up all of its knowledge just to run down a dead-end street. People were idiots in the old days too. They wasted a fortune in gold and manpower building castles. What was it all for? To bicker with each other. Today, people are even dumber. They build atomic and hydrogen bombs in order to erase humanity with one push of a button. How is it that humanity itself, unlike its science, hasn't progressed in the least. The Americans are only ordinary people. The Russians are ordinary people. The Chinese too are ordinary people. All ordinary people desperately competing with other ordinary people. No matter how much dirt you pile up, it's still just dirt. Science can build on the results of others, so it constantly makes progress. But humans can't build on the lives of others, so they make no progress. That's why everywhere we look, we see helpless fools with deadly weapons, and that's dangerous. An idiot sits at the computer a dimwit in the cockpit of the jet and a madman at the control panel of the atomic rockets. That's the current problem. In the Buddha Dharma, we can't live on what others have left behind. The reason science progresses is that it can build on what previous generations have left behind. In the Buddha Dharma, it's just the opposite. It's to stop wanting to feed on what others have left behind. Everyone is worried about humanity, but it's a matter of putting an end to what ordinary people call humanity and turning everyone into a Buddha. That which serves humans only leads them down a dead end. People negotiate the market price of objects, but this market price isn't something you can rely on. Things whose market value can be disputed are just practical commodities. They're products. Buddha isn't a product. The Chinese character for falsehood, Itsuari, means serving humans. Today, we consider culture and arts to be a service to humanity. The world of culture and arts is constantly changing. Culture doesn't mean anything more than the further development of artifice. That's why culture is a tragedy. What can we rely on no matter where we go, only on life itself, which is unlimited in all directions. When we carefully read Marx and Angels, we realize that the whole thing is just a matter of how we split up the loot. Even if the whole of humanity were communist, until each and every one of us attains true freedom, we would still have this ceaseless bickering. As long as each one of us isn't truly free, none of us can truly enjoy peace of mind. Chapter 17 To you, who say you don't get along with others. Everyone talks about their own point of view. 
But who really cares? It would be better if you just kept your mouth shut. Some say, why do you think I am anyway? An ordinary person, what else? Some are proud of their wealth, others of their name and position, still others of their satori. In this way, they're just showing off how ordinary they are. People these days are so stupid. People always have something they can't forget. If they're rich, they can't forget their money. If they're intelligent, they can't forget their brains. If they're talented, they always think about how good they are at this or that. But whatever it is, is always, it always gets in the way. It's only because we're so concerned about this sack of flesh that we think of ourselves as rich or beautiful or whatever. But when we die, everything is one. Nothing is yours anymore. We're always trying to promote our ego. The only question is, how many years can we keep it up? When we're dead, our body is just a piece of meat. The same moon sometimes seems to smile and sometimes seems to cry. Sometimes we simply admire it over a glass of sake. But whichever moon people look at, they only see what corresponds to their karmic perception. None of that is real. Everybody reads the newspaper differently. One person looks at the stock prices first. Another reads the sports section first. One dives into the serial, ser serialized novel, while another is mainly interested in politics. They differ so much because they're all lost in their own various consciousnesses. Only outside of these varying consciousnesses does the world that everyone shares reveal itself. For this world hasn't been thought up by humans. It doesn't fit our personal viewpoints. You say, I saw it with my own eyes. Nothing is as unreliable as your own eyes. They are just the eyes of an ordinary person. You're fooling yourself if you think that the world as you see it is reality. Everyone only sees what corresponds to their personal karmic perception. A cat sees differently than I do. And what about a bacillus? who weighs only a thousandth of a of toilet fly. What does it think about? Certainly not the same things as I do. The baculus and I have different perspectives on the world and on life. The true world only appears when we have finished once and for all with all of these karmic views. People's heads are all rigid. Every ism is a form of rigidity. This rigidity is the reason we don't recognize the Buddha Dharma, no matter how close we are. You cry out, peace, peace. But if you would only be quiet, it would be so much more peaceful. You say, in my opinion, but it's precisely when opinions and theories come into the picture that the bickering starts.
People let themselves be manipulated by the laws of their time when they believe that good and bad exist. In the past, blood feuds were legal. Today, they are illegal. In the past, adultery was illegal. Today, it's legal. We believe that good and bad, pleasant and unpleasant, right and wrong, all exist, that there are always two sides. But are there really two sides? No. Reality is only one, and even that one is empty. People just need to be natural, but they try to squeeze even this naturalness into a framework. And because everyone has their own framework, they can never agree. Everyone has their own consciousness. No one's consciousness is like anyone else's. It's completely individual and different. The self is nothing fixed. If I hadn't by chance become a monk, then... I probably wouldn't be talking about the Buddha Dharma now. I'd probably be a gangster boss who wouldn't have anything more to say than and now I will rip out your guts, you stinking dog. Since the beginning of human history, this bickering has never stopped. The greatest wars have their origin in this bickering mind. War is simply the most exaggerated form of this. Both you and me are just ordinary people. Since in any case, it's just ordinary people who wage war on each other. Everybody is wrong, friend as much as foe. The winner and the loser are in any case just ordinary people. It's so sad to watch the world's conflicts. There's such a lack of common sense. In the middle of a fight about irrigation, it suddenly rains. Since the fight was only about the irrigation of their rice fields, the rain solves the problems. A beautiful woman and an ugly woman What's the difference when they're 80? Originally, everything is empty and clear.